During this decade, the United States moved into a new era of domestic progress and evolving technology, but foreign conflicts and terrorism foreshadowed troubles on the horizon. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 defining moments in 1990s America. For this list, we've chosen moments that we felt best represent this essential decade in American history. Bob, we are witnessing tonight a modern tragedy and drama of Shakespearean proportion being played out live on television. Number 10, the O.J. Simpson trial. People are going to the freeway, parking their cars, and waving at O.J., we're told, as they drive by. Americans were glued to their TV sets when football star O.J. Simpson went to trial for the murder of ex-wife Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ron Goldman. If there is any doubt in anybody's mind about this person not committing this crime, I mean, then they have a real problem with reality. Cameras provided a constant view of the courtroom, making celebrities out of everyone involved. DNA issues and questions of racism eventually led to a not guilty verdict. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187. However, public opinion of his innocence widely varied with race and showed a racial divide still alive in 90s America. When the verdict came, America stopped to watch, and the result split the nation. Number nine, don't ask, don't tell. Our country slaps us in the face and orders us don't ask and orders us don't tell. Long frowned upon in the U.S. military, gays and lesbians were finally given an inroads into legally serving their country with the don't ask, don't tell policy. A compromise of sorts between each side of the debate, it allowed homosexuals in the service permitted they did not speak of their orientation. It is right because it provides greater protection to those who happen to be homosexual and want to serve their country honorably in uniform. In return, superiors were prohibited from questioning their sexuality. Problems remained, but this was a launching pad for change to come. I am not asking anymore. I am telling. I am telling. I am telling. Will you tell with me? Um, I just, I just want to say, you know, can we, can we all get along? Can we, can we get along? Number eight, the Rodney King riots. Police brutality became a visible problem when motorist Rodney King was severely beaten by LAPD officers after leading police on a high-speed chase. The incident was taped and attracted massive media attention. We've all seen the pictures of Los Angeles police officers beating a man they had just pulled over. When most of the primarily Caucasian officers were found not guilty in the assault on King, an African-American man, tensions boiled over. L.A. erupted into violence, murder and looting for six days, a rare glimpse of unsuppressed rage in modern America. Number seven, the North American Free Trade Agreement. In a few moments, I will sign the North American Free Trade Act into law. Signed into law in 1993, the North American Free Trade Agreement was successful in creating an effective free trade zone between the U.S., Canada, and Mexico. It will create the world's largest trade zone and create 200,000 jobs in this country by 1995 alone. NAFTA initially caused worries of negative environmental impact and a loss of jobs. Fortunately, President Bill Clinton signed additional agreements safeguarding against such problems, and the resulting years saw a major boom in economic benefits for all three countries, which slowly increased over time. Number six, the Oklahoma City bombing. The bombing in Oklahoma City was an attack on innocent children and defenseless citizens. Early on a Wednesday morning in 1995, a thundering explosion shook America into the era of terrorism. The nation now had to come to grips with the shock of this unprecedented event and the reality of terrorism in the American heartland. Frustrated with the federal government and its questionable actions in recent sieges, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols decided to attack Oklahoma City's Alfred P. Murrah Federal Building. 168 people, including 19 children, died in the attack, and more than 500 were injured. 
Using a truck loaded with explosives, the pair destroyed a massive amount of the building and took 168 innocent lives, including many children, in one of America's deadliest domestic terrorist acts. You have lost too much, but you have not lost everything. And you have certainly not lost America. Number five, a balanced budget and economic stability. Read my lips. No new taxes. Leading into the 90s, the country struggled amidst a recession and painful federal deficit. Try as he might, President George H.W. Bush had to rely on taxes to try to set this straight, but lost public support along the way. It was the state of Ohio that took Clinton over the top and left George Bush with little but to surrender gracefully. President Clinton came into office committed to solving this. His budget plans finally produced a budget surplus in 1998, and the economy thrived as technology exploded with the popularity of the Internet. Number four, the Monica Lewinsky scandal. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. For all his achievements, President Clinton had his fair share of embarrassments. Long dogged by allegations of infidelity, his reputation took a hit when his affair with White House intern Monica Lewinsky became public in 1998. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Clinton strongly denied the allegations, but mounting evidence led him to finally concede his involvement. Indeed, I did have a relationship with Ms. Lewinsky that was not appropriate. In fact, it was wrong. This led to an impeachment trial on perjury and obstruction of justice charges, where he was acquitted thanks to strong support from Democrats. Number three, the Columbine High School Massacre. Good evening, everyone. The reaction of so many people today was, oh, no, not again, another high school. A nationwide fear of school shootings was born when Eric Harris and Dylan Klebold killed 13 people at Columbine High School and then took their own lives. Investigations revealed an intricately planned massacre that could have been even deadlier if their bombs hadn't failed. Eric and Dylan's bombs are now due to explode, but fail to detonate. The killer's extensive arsenal influenced a continued push for more gun control, while antidepressants, bullying, video games, and heavy metal music were all examined as possible motivations for the shooting. The president was shooting bombs overseas Yet, I'm a bad guy because I've, I've sang some rock and roll songs. Number two, Operation Desert Storm. Regrettably, we now believe that only force will make him leave. The United States continued its role as a peacekeeper when Iraqi forces invaded Kuwait. Threatening Iraq leader Saddam Hussein with an attack if he failed to leave the near defenseless country, President Bush was forced to declare war in January, kicking off the Gulf War. Instead, he tried to make this a dispute between Iraq and the United States of America. Well, he failed. American soldiers took advantage of superior weapons like the Patriot missile to bomb the opposition and force a retreat. Kuwait had been liberated, but Hussein remained a major enemy for years to come. Before we present our final pick, here are some honorable mentions. On April the 24th, 1990, five astronauts aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery left on a journey that changed our vision of the universe forever. In focus this evening, the glitch that could short-circuit cyberspace. On New Year's Day 2000, is it possible that we're in for an international disaster because so many of the world's computers will be utterly confused by what date it is? Number one, the rise of the Internet. What began as a million-dollar investment by the government in 1969 to link computers to share information was now, at the turn of the century, the future. Developing for decades, the Internet came to true global fruition in the 90s. The World Wide Web was introduced in 91, 
and browsers soon followed, making web browsing truly possible. Many of us believe that this is, in fact, the telecommunications infrastructure for the 21st century. The internet quickly became commercialized. Internet service providers popped up everywhere, and prominent sites like Amazon.com were born. You know, what's not to love? You order the groceries online and we deliver them to your door. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited information was affordable, available at the click of a button, and people were connected everywhere. America and the world was forever changed. Do you agree with our list? Which events do you think define 1990s America and beyond? For more informative top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com.